I'm Jan Johnson. I live here in Bolton. And I have a history of having a little business helping people convert their lawns from conventional to organic some years ago. And then I worked for six years in New Hampshire as an organic farmer, helping manage an organic farm. Uh, organic lawns are a topic that just thrill me, actually. Mm -hmm. I think there's a big hoot out of them because because there's so much you can do with your lawn. You can you can reduce pesticide use. You can but you can uh, help the bees. You can reduce water use. You can save money. You can improve your soil. There's just so much bang for the buck by going to an organic lawn. And so tonight we're going to learn how you can do that. Okay. All right. Questions. We're going to go back and we're going to see general knowledge here. Organic farming standards apply to all products sold to customers, food and processing only. Anybody have any ideas? What are you saying? Well, organic farming standards. For, or if you say something is certified organic, what does that apply to? All products or just food? Beef. So, right, right. So, if if you see, well, we'll go to the next one. Okay. So, if you see, sometimes we see organic soap. What does that mean? Anybody know? Organic shampoo. Um, go ahead. Um, I think it means that the products that make the soap, like the individual ingredients, are certified organic. Okay, so she's saying that the ingredients in the soap are organic, right? Okay. <clears throat> the, okay, the, the laws that apply to organic farming, and that's what most people feel, and, but the, the laws that apply to foods do not pertain to shampoo, to soaps, to f even to pesticides, to hydroponic food, just to food. Um, if it says organic shampoo on it, they, maybe they put some organic lemon juice in there and they call it organic. But, but there's no standards. It's like the word natural. You can put natural on almost any cereal box and, and I don't know, because it has corn in it, you know, it's natural. Okay. <clears throat> so just understand that and because if you call up a, a lawn care company and say, do you have organic products, they're likely to say, oh, all our products are organic. Okay, so how many of you high school chemistry? Did you think that? Are you ready? Um, organic refers to, do you remember? Mm -hmm. Any, anything that's carbon based, mm -hmm. right? Or living. Okay, so, so they can say, oh yeah, our, our DDT is organic. All our pesticides mm -hmm. are organic mm -hmm. compounds. They're all derived from petrochemicals, right? Which is an organic compound. Okay, so you need to be mm -hmm. a wise consumer. There are, and know that there are two meanings to the word organic. Okay, next. And this is just a, a, an interesting question to talk about organic farming in the beginning. Standards in general. Organic farmers don't think hydroponic vegetables should be able to be certified organic. <clears throat> Anybody want to guess why? Because it should be grown on soil. Excellent. <laughs> yes, excellent. It should be grown in soil. And, one of, the, one of the two facets of, of organic farming is not only to, to reduce use of, of toxins, but to, to feed the soil and to, to uh, grow plants that way. And hydroponic is a matter of feeding the plant, basically. Okay, let's go on. All right, so we're going to talk about this. Most people don't realize this. They don't realize that the most aggressive plant in your lawn is grass. You know, you have, you have that given to you right off the bat, okay? <coughs> and that, that realize that you have that on your side. It's not, you don't have to coax the grass. You just have to give it a nice, fertile home. And it'll do what it's supposed to do. That's why grass was chosen to be lawn material, right? Because it's, it's tough, it's aggressive, and as long as it has a nice, healthy diet, it'll just go gangbusters. Okay. You want to grow na grass naturally? Why? Okay, and I'm just going to let you read these. Okay.
That's our main problem is we don't want to be using products that kill <coughs> living tissue, whether it's ki killing, the, killing weeds or whether it's killing bugs or whether it gets into the food you eat. It's just not a good idea. <coughs> Okay, I was going to do a guessing game, but oh. <laughs> I think it's too late. So we'll Sorry. <laughs> okay, these are some of the major pro problems associated with pesticide use. Nobody wants to have anything on that list. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, this is a really interesting graph here. Can you read the bottom? No. <laughs> so these representative pictures of a person drawn by a four-year-old at the top and a five-year-old at the bottom. Yoki children from the foothills in the valley of Sonoma, Sonora, Mexico. The valley children are exposed to agricultural pesticides, whereas farmers in the foothills use traditional farming methods. So the children on the left were not exposed to pesticides. These are children on the right, typical pictures of children the same age. And you can see already their, brain, their brains are, are, are developmentally uh, damaged. <coughs> How many times do you see tumors in dogs? You know, dogs only go to be 11 or 12 or 13 years old. You know, that's a pretty short life to develop a tumor. Okay. And this tells you why it's so important to, to keep your lawn natural because you can make a huge contribution, right? People are putting using more more pesticides on their lawns, right, than farmers are using on their vegetables. Okay. So we'll talk about what happens when you put pesticides on your lawn, and we'll, we're going to start from looking at what goes on in the soil and why we need to protect that soil and not put those pesticides on there. In the soil, we have all these living organisms that work together. It's kind of like a factory, you know? We have, we have organisms bringing in input. We have organisms eating and digesting things. We have organisms eating other organisms. We have animals that are feeding and, and leaving droppings which fertilize the soil. Okay, then. Okay, and we are all familiar with earthworms. Earthworms are your friend. They do, they do amazing work. They really work hard. They do amazing work. You know, you, if you have worms, you don't hear aerators, right? Okay. All right, let's look at this garden here. See along the path? There's um, straw. This little garden had four bales of hay put on it. What happens to all that straw? It disappears by the end of the season. What happens to the worms feeder, right? The what? It does, it does. And the worms actually take it down in the soil and, and incorporate it into the soil. And then there's fungi. Have you ever seen the, the uh, bumper sticker that says farmers have more fungi? <laughs> or organic, sorry, organic farmers have more fungi. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's all about the relationship between fungi and the, and the roots of the plant. They they just go right there and they go they're right next to that root there and they and then it's like it's like they're the they're the cashier for the in the store you know they you give the cashier money and you get clothes right well they give the 
they, they provide nutrients to the root, and then root gives them nutrients for them to grow and to put back in the soil. You know, there's this constant relationship going on. When you kill all that fungi off, then your plants are limited. They, you know, they, they don't have a grocery store anymore, or, or, a, or a clothing store, whatever it is, and a cashier is gone. They also, because you have that fungi, they, it's like having mushrooms in, like, in the garden, right? It, it builds organic material. This is bacteria. One way plants get nitrogen. Okay. Nematodes, and we can go through these. But you're getting the idea, right? These are all the different kinds of animals. We, don't, we, we know so little about these, right? We don't study this, right? But they, it's like a, you know, like your body. You know, they're intricate parts of your body that you don't understand, but they all work together. Okay, this is a, this is a little wasp, and it's laying an egg or it's parasitizing a moth egg. So this is a moth egg, and you know what moths do. They come in, let's say a, 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 a broccoli moth comes in and it flies around and it lays an egg on your on your broccoli, and then, and then you know, within a few weeks you have a, a, the egg hatching and then the worm eating your, your broccoli, right? Well, this little wasp parasite, parasitizes these, these moth eggs, right? And, and makes them non-functioning. So, as soon as you spray pesticide, you're killing little bugs like this that you can't even see, right? But they're, but they're your friends, okay? These are all insects that, that have lookalikes. Uh, you probably know ladybugs. Ladybugs, here's a ladybug here. I think it's eating, you can maybe see here, it's eating larvae or little bugs on the back of a leaf. That's what they like to do. when you spray for the other bug, then you, you kill the ladybugs too. So go ahead. All right, this is a picture of up the top there. That's me in the 50s, okay? And, and, and this is, this is my, my neighbor here, this fellow on the left. is a man named Ray Rusk. And he had been a farmer all his life, lived out in the country. And when he retired, he bought a little a house right next door to mine. He, they were living next door to me. And, and uh, he, but he kept his farm out in the country, and he, he rented it, right? So he went out there, and he'd bring home a case of chickens, and they'd slaughter them and put them in their freezer or whatever they were, you know, they knew all these farm uh, skills. But <clears throat> about that age, when I was about that age, I remember noticing that Ray Rusk had, like, the nicest lawn in town. And I thought, what does he do there to make that lawn like that? And 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 uh, I wasn't sure, but one day Ray showed up with a truckload of manure from his farm, right, and st proceeded to throw it all over the yard, right. And I was like, oh, huh, interesting. And I watched that because my lawn wasn't to look like that, you know. So. I kind of just chopped that away in my head, and I never thought much more about it, except that I just thought that must be what he did to fix his lawn. And as an adult, I became ill. And, and my doctor said to me, don't use anything on your lawn. Just stay away from lawn care products and let your lawn go to heck. And I thought, well, you know, I'm only putting like a, one bag of fertilizer in the, more, in the spring and one in the fall. It's not going to make much difference. So I stopped doing it. But within a couple of years, the lawn did go to heck. It was looking pretty bad. And I started thinking about it, and I thought, gee, manure. Hmm. I wonder if I could do what my neighbor did. So I went and I bought five bags of, of cow manure, and I dumped them into a wheelbarrow. And I walked around my lawn with a shovel and spread the manure. And then I forgot about it. The next spring came out, and I started going mowing the lawn. And I looked at the lawn and I said, what is this? 
because there were these bright green fans that went like this. And I'm thinking, what is this? Well, of course it was the manure, right? I had, this is where I had flung it with the shovel, try to spread it, try to spread it out. And here are all these bright green fans with weeds in between, right? Fans of grass with weeds in between. I thought, what do you know? So I went and I bought five more bags of manure, dumped them in, and did the same thing. And the next spring, this was the second year, <clears throat> there were there were still that same kind of shaped area, but there were spots in between that were still not so good, right? Where there was like stuff like uh, creeping Charlie, you know, that little mm -hmm. vine that has the purple flower on it. There were areas of that. So the third year, I did the same thing again and just threw it on top of the Creeping Charlie and said, let's see what happens. And it filled in. And people started saying, gee, your lawn looks great. What'd you do? So there you are. And that's all I did was to copy what an old farmer knew. Yeah? Um, does it have to be a certain kind of manure or aged or anything like that? Does it have to be a certain kind of manure? No. In fact, whether it's manure from cows or whether it's manure, whether it's compost from uh, leaves or uh, cranberry hulls. I got compost once and had cooking oil in it. It was, sh it was shiny. <clears throat> it's all pretty much like 111, you know, the NPK numbers on a bag of fertilizers. It was, it was pretty much 111 in there. So they're all giving you pretty much the same nutrients. I think cow manure may be a little higher in nitrogen. <laughs> But <clears throat> basically the same. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> here we are. This is what we want in a healthy soil. We'll talk about one percent, one one percent organic matter in your soil needs because that's an important figure, and we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so this is what our primary thing we need. Lawns are easy; They're, it's not like growing uh, roses or or uh, tropical flowers. You know, they just they compost and a right correct pH. And you're pretty much set for a lawn. It's really simple. They're not very demanding. Okay, we know that these high nitrogen fertilizers work well. The grass greens up. Why not just put, you know, 10, 10, 10 on there? The big problem with putting on high nitrogen fertilizers is that it causes organic material in the soil to break down. It becomes water soluble, it rains, and it washes out. And if you take a soil sample from a lawn that's been treated with chemicals and high nitrogen fertilizers for a lot of years, like the my lawn was when I stopped putting fertilizer on, even though I wasn't putting a whole lot on it, or organic material drops. And if you go and do a soil test, if you get the opportunity sometime, you see somebody that has a, a you know, a really nice lawn with a lot of, uh, you know, that you know is being treated with a lot of nitrogen. Take a shovel to it and go down a couple inches and take the soil home. It's amazing. If you put it in a bucket, it dries out within hours. When I started doing this little business, that with, with helping people with their lawns, I, I would come home with sometimes with a bucket from, from some, with a lawn like that and soil in it, and, and the instructions are to let it dry out a bit before you send it. And the, the soil would be dry within hours. I could put it in one of these packages and mail it off. Whereas if I got soil from a garden that was an organic garden and somebody had been you know, putting all their table scraps and all this wood stuff in it, it would take days for it to dry out. So that tells you something about the soil and, and what happens when we get when we don't have rain. Okay? <clears throat> One woman that I helped, she only had a little lawn. It was about half the size of this room. And she said, you know, I got the lawn service to come, and they started coming four times a year. And then they said, 
well, she complained. She said the lawn didn't look very good. And they said, well, we'll have to come, you know, really six times a year. She said, okay. So they started coming six times a year for this little spot, you know? And then she said, well, you know, it's, I don't know, it's not really looking like a great lawn. What's wrong? They said, well, we you really need to have us come eight times a year. So they started coming eight times a year, and uh, it still wasn't really doing very well. And she complained to them about it. And they said, well, you really need a sprinkler system. So then she, she, at that point, she called me, and I said, really, what you need is compost. You know, it's really not that complicated. And what ha that's the way typically it works. You start out four times, and then three times, six times, and, and, and so on, and, until you eventually need, need to get irrigation. So here's the two different meanings of the word organic. NOFA, the Northeast Organic Farming Association, which certifies, well, used to certify farmers, now there's a different agency that does it, but they're, they're kind of the, the key agency as far as supporting the organic farmers in our state. They have a uh, landscaping class and they teach organic te techniques for landscapers. So you can become an organic certified landscaper, which I was for a while. It's confusing because here we say, okay, we're going to be organic, but then we say that there's that that there's a different meaning to this. So it can get confusing about what our what our terms are when we use the term organic. You know, we're saying organic. I'm saying we're we're, we're I'm talking about an organic lawn, but if you go to a to a lawn service company, they'll say, yeah, our our our, our products are organic. So it can be really confusing. Well, what would you? Say? ask them to know what it really is then? Uh, you would ask them what's, the question is what would you ask? You would ask what, what's in what they, they're using. Is it certified organic? You could ask. Um, you could ask um, what the um, NPK is on it. What's the, what's the uh, fertilizer analysis on it? If you're getting really high nitrogen figure then you know, you don't want that. Um, generally, if you're looking at a fertilizer and it's organic fertilizer, it's made either from crushed rocks or from some of their natural source. So it's going to be like feather meal, right? Or bone meal, or crushed rock phosphate, or uh, sulfur. It's not going to be. Uh, a name that you can't pronounce. <laughs> I guess that's the best I can say. <laughs> just to be, you know, just to be, uh, think for yourself. You have to think for yourself in this. One thing you can do too is ask, say, you know, are you, are you, are your products certified by the National Organic Program? Are your products certified by OMRI, Organic Materials Research Institute? That's another question you could ask. Mm -hmm. Are those products you can purchase in the store? Are oh, those what? Are those products you can purchase in the store yourself? No, let's go back to that. Um, this is not a product, it's a stamp. Well, if you saw a product, I mean, could you see a product with that stamp? Yeah. Yeah, if you look on if you look um, if you look on fertilizers, you, sometimes you see that. Um, this week I'm going to pick up my order from NOFA. NOFA, the Northeast Organic Farmers Association, takes a, takes a, does a bulk order every year, and I'll go get my fertilizers from my lawn and from my garden from them, and those bags will all say either NLP approved or OMRI approved. Wow. It's a good place to get organic products because you can't always get them. It's hard to find. They're limited. I found them at the hardware store. Um, Have you? It's not a lot, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you go in the store, if you go to like to Cataldo's, ask them, say, what do you have that's NLP approved or OMRI approved?
Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little more specifically about the, the amount of organic material in the soil. Optimally, you want 5% or better. A uh, pH of 6.5 to 7, and you need 5 inches of topsoil. So these three things are key for your lawn, but that's pretty much it. It's not much more, it's not very complicated. And we talk about 5 inches of topsoil. Um, Something you can ch check when you take your soil test is how far down the soil goes. Somebody asked me to come and look at his lawn once and he said, my lawn is fine until it gets 10 feet from the street and then it's just terrible. He said, I can't figure it out. I keep putting fertilizer on it, I don't know what's wrong. So I went to do the soil test and I used this, it's a soil probe, right? And I stuck it down in there and the soil probe went down on his lawn. I took out the soil test and then I went down and did a separate one to do a separate one on this strip that was not very good. The probe would only go in this far. When I got a shovel and dug down, there was soil down this far, but then it was rock and gravel. Okay, so what had happened was when they built the house, they, they put in some nice topsoil there and then they probably ran short in that last 10 feet. They just said, oh, Put three inches and let it fall. So there's all kinds of surprises that you find that, that they'll do if you have a, you know, the house is built like that. So if you, if you have like an area like that that's unexplainably just not doing what it's supposed to be doing, that could be the problem. So you need to take a soil test. You need a shovel and a bucket, a clean bucket. You don't want a bucket that had wine in it before because it's going to change your results, okay? And these are, <clears throat> this is handy. You don't need one of these, but they're, it's good to see that this is what you want to get. You know, this is ultimately what you want. You want a core of soil that's, that's between, that, that goes from like, in like five to seven inches down in the soil. You want to get a sample from that root zone where your roots are growing, you know not the top of the soil because that's going to be a lot of plant material and you get a, you get a figure that's artificially high because you're you're measuring organic material at the surface like you know crumbled mm -hmm. leaves and that's sort of <coughs> you want to get down and measure between two and five inches <coughs> down into the soil and get a core of dirt but you can do that with a shovel you can just dig down and take a wedge and and cut take off the, the sod that's on top take that piece of soil and, and send that in so go ahead and, and this is the way you want to take it. <coughs> You're gonna, this person has done four soil tests. One in the trees or shrubs, one up there in the vegetable garden, one down here in the front yard, and one in the backyard. Now if there was like, this is where you might want to do if there's a problem area along the street, right? Maybe there's too much salt, right? So you want to do a separate oil, soil test there. But when you take your soil test, you want to go zigzag so that, so that you get different samplings from the lawn. So that when, if, you have, if you do have an issue right here, you're not taking it all from the best areas and you're not taking it from the worst areas. You're taking it from, from areas all around so you get like an average. So how many tests is that? One test in that case? Or is that? that is only, f that's four tests, right? They probed in a lot. Oh, but for yeah, samples. he took they took samples, like a sample with this, right, from e where each of those dots is, and then mix them together, and then mix them in a bucket, right? So he would have had to have four buckets oh, with four, <coughs> four different salt tests, right? And they'll be labeled. We might label them like um, F Y. Uh, 2017, right? Backyard, BY, 2017. SHR, 2017, right? So that when you get your soil test back, you say, oh, this is the, this is the front yard, this is the backyard, and so on. Is there a reason why you want to not do them separately? I mean, is it just... Not do them separately? Like why, why, why not have 20, I don't know, 20 different tests? Is it Oh, just the reason you wouldn't want to do a different test for each spot is because it costs you uh, $15 for each test. Yeah. So you'll, this will cost $60 probably for four tests, right? Okay.
that clear? Both of them, there's really good instructions on the web too. Yeah. For how to, how to do all this. To do is go yeah. Can. Yeah. Okay. How long does it take to do a, a test in terms of simply in? Then you get it back within a few days. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And it depends. It, you, you mouse, um, you know, like in May, you could, they can have a backlog. They can all have a backlog at that time of year. A good time to take a cell test is in the fall. Conditions are more consistent, and then you can, I can order, or I would suggest you order if you're going to want organic fertilizers for your lawn. I join NOFA and I go through their bulk order because it's a lot cheaper. And, and I can order it in January, I pick it up next week, and then I have it ready. So. I suggest taking it in the, in the fall. And they also suggest that because the, the soil conditions are more stable then and you get a more consistent test each year. But we should do one now too? I mean. But do it now, right. Do one now and then. Right, if you're gonna to wanna to work on your lawn. I mean, everybody's excited now. They wanna work on the lawn, so do it now. <laughs> Don't wait till September. Say, I'll do it next year because it'll never happen. Well, how often should you do it until, should you do it every year for a while until you <clears throat> You, um, yeah, yeah uh, uh, let's talk about some more and then it'll probably okay. become more evident. But once a year is good until you feel confident that you got close to what you want. So here's your soil test. This is what you're going to get back. And can you see it here? Okay, so <clears throat> I have, I've, we're up there, up there, the very, uh, above the graph it says sample l 11 j that means lawn 2011 j from johnson that's me right so i know that that's my soil test and it's not my daughter's or somebody else's right and then over here it says soil ph six okay we want it up 6.5 to 7 okay so that means you need to put lime on so you look down here and they'll tell you here. Lime, see right there? 10 pounds of lime for every thousand square feet. Oh, there you go. Okay, so you get a 50 pound bag of lime and you can do 5,000 square feet. So it doesn't need a whole lot of lime, but that will help it. So that's the first number that is six. Okay, and then we see the the P, the phosphorus, K, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. All those look pretty good. They're not, they're okay. Except potassium. Except potassium, right, it's really low, right? Okay. <clears throat> we're gonna put compost on there and we're gonna put so much compost on there that it's gonna have plenty of potassium. <laughs> All the soils in this area seem to be very low in potassium for some reason. 
Uh, you can add potassium directly if you like, with, with, if you have wood ash, if you have a wood stove, or you have somebody that, that you know that has, know that if you put wood ash on there, wood ash have, has half the effect of lime. So that if you put um, 50 pounds of wood ash on, it's like putting on 25 pounds of lime. So know that, that you, you don't want to use too often much if your pH is pretty close to correct. Okay? And then, and then remember I told you that, um, I don't know if you know the numbers, NPK, you know, on a bag of fertilizer it says NPK. It stands for nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. And if you buy compost of just about any kind, like I was saying before, the, the manure is a little bit higher on the nitrogen, but it's going to be pretty much 111. And if it's 111, that means for a 100 pound bag of uh, fertilizer or whatever it is, compost or whatever it is, for every 100 pounds, one pound of that is nitrogen. One pound of it is potassium, and one pound of it is phosphorus. Okay, so. That's how you read those numbers. That, does anybody want more clarification on that? Uh, are those just pure ratios, or like sometimes if you see like um, commercial, not commercial, but fertilizer you can buy the store, it's like ten to five, three or something. Yeah. Like there's also just three ratios. It's the same thing. It means for a hundred pounds of that fertilizer, five pound would ten, ten five three ten pounds would be nitrogen, mm -hmm. five pounds is phosphorus, three pounds is potassium. Okay, so if you're putting if you're putting on a, a truckload of compost, you're putting on lots of potassium. Like how many pounds does that weigh? How many? I don't know. A thousand pounds. You're putting on uh, ten pounds of, of potassium, right? So you're fixing that. What do they say here? Potassium. 3.5 pounds per hundred per, per thousand square feet. We can figure that more finely, but basically, no, you're, you're just you're pretty much covering your bases when you put compost on. So let's go to the next one. We'll be able to see it more clearly later. Oh, oh yeah, and when oh, yeah. back, sorry, Lynn. Yeah? Back up, right there. <laughs> That the last thing I wanted to point out was where it says organic material 4%, okay? And I'm going to show you my, this is 4%, and I'm going to show you my lawn. And the, the next picture, if it's going to come up, is it stuck? Yeah. There it is, okay, there we are on the tractor, okay? This lawn is, was tested at 4%, 4 and this is what it looked like, okay? 4% organic material. You can see this clover here or something, I don't know what. You can also see that it's very green because there's been a lot of rain. You know, it's been growing so fast, I haven't been able to keep up with it, right? So, so it really is getting, looking better than it ordinarily does, okay? This is a driveway here. You can see there's lots of weeds here. Over there, you can see it's kind of brown. Um, you know, there's, that's what you get in 4% organic material, basically. That, the reason I put that up there, so that you could get an idea. You know, if you can get your organic material up to six or seven percent, you're going to have a really nice lawn, right? If it's down around two percent, it's going to be pretty crummy. Five percent is considered pretty minimal, right? Everybody's saying that's mine. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put compost on. Put in late spring or early fall, and you're going to put a quarter of an inch for one cubic yard for 1,300 square feet of lawn. That's written on your little cheat sheet that I gave you, the little graph sheet up in the corner. Okay, so if you have a lawn like that was there, you know, I'm, truthfully, I'm perfectly happy with my lawn like that. Um, some people would say, oh, you've got dandelions. You know, I'm, you know it's, I'd rather mess with my garden and have my garden. 
put all my energy into my garden. But in recent years, I've started putting more compost on my lawn just because I figure if I'm going to try to get people to, to uh, do their lawn organically, I should have a lawn that looks really good, right? So I put, I put compost on a year ago and then again last summer, or two years ago and then again last summer. So hopefully, you know, I'm going to have a pretty snazzy lawn um, next year. So. And it's pretty predictable. Pretty much three times. If, you know, if you have if you have a lawn like that, and <clears throat> and you're happy with it, that's fine. If you want to, you know, if you want to have it a little bit nicer and a few less weeds, then put compost on once. If you want it really fancy and you want it to look like a golf course, or you want it to look like the neighbor that's getting, you know, the the, the monthly treatment, and and uh, you want it to look like pizzazz, then do it three times and. Maybe four times, depending on how bad it is. But <clears throat> you'll get there. Okay, so know that grass spreads by rhizomes. As soon as you put that compost down there, it'll 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 have more food to grow, just like a child, you know, it'll grow and spread. And <clears throat> it also provides natural weed control. The more they the more the grass grows, the more it chokes out the weeds. If you have a lawn that you've been had on lawn service for 10 years or whatever, now is not the time to really start converting because you're going to, your lawn can crash. If you stop doing the lawn care and you put on compost, the reason being that, that as I was saying, that you know the bugs are dead, the worms are gone, um, the the organic system is kind of dried up. There's no organic material, and it's going to take time for that compost to get down into the soil where it can help the, the, get to the roots. Um, and then you, the best way to do that is to do it in the fall. So your usual thing this summer, put it on in the fall, and then again in the next spring, and and you'll you'll um, you'll have that winter time where the the organic material has a chance to work its way. And let, you know, let the worms regenerate. You know, you're gonna have to, you know, grow worms again and stuff to get to get that stuff down into the lawn. <clears throat> okay, you don't want to you know October is about mid-October, I think is the date, and maybe mid first of April maybe is this are the cutoff dates. You really don't want to put anything like that on in the wintertime because, because um, the ground is frozen. Chances are it's going to run off. Make note of this comment on topsoil. If you if you have areas that you want to fill in, people say, "Oh, I got some nice uh, hummus, or I got some nice topsoil, and filled this in." Well, the only definition that's required for topsoil is that it be sifted, so the rocks. So chances are, if you're buying a truckload of topsoil, that it's been taken from a construction site, the rocks have been sifted out, and it's been delivered to you. So there's going to be very little organic material in there. So if you need to fill in an area, yeah, you can bring in topsoil and fill it in, but you need you need compost in there too. You need five percent compost. You're five, you know, well, yeah, you might even have five percent organic material in there too. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to get the how-to, mm -hmm. how to do this. So the top one, are you referring to like a compost tea or 
actually oh, blow well, there's companies who come. Yeah, they come and they have expensive equipment and they blow the compost out over your lawn. It's expensive. Um, yeah. Oh, you're talking about your apartment. Yeah. Well, the compost tea is that. Yeah, compost tea is. You really need something more substantial than just a tea. Okay. If you want right. to yeah, fertilize, you know that'll help. Yeah, but um, and I think the best way seems to be to find some call the coach at the high school. Uh -huh. And you know these kids, they're they're like, oh yeah, instead of going to the club to work out on Saturdays, I'll come over there and work for you and and spread compost for fifteen bucks an hour and for a couple hours and and make thirty bucks and. What I've done when I do this is to say, okay, if you'll come, two hours is probably enough. Maybe three hours is pushing it, but it's a, that's hard work, shoveling for two solid hours. So kind of figure that, and, and I would figure kind of one kid can do, and I've never measured this, but this is just a wild guess. I'm guessing a, a high school athlete could shovel a yard, a cubic yard, you know what a cubic yard is, right? Like a compost, that's the way it's sold in an hour and distributed onto the lawn, right? So I say, well, I'll pay you 15 bucks an hour and if you do a good job, I'll give you 20, which of course they always want to do, right? <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, I mean, I can do that. So so that seems to have worked really well. And, and athletes are good a good place to go because they, they like that workout. <laughs> um, you can get it's a good idea. You want to have a, if you're going to get let's say let's say you're going to get five yards of compost, right? You want to have two wheelbarrows, and you're going to have three kids ideally, right? One kid with each wheelbarrow, and a third one shoveling, um, and then have them trade off. You know, shovel three four or five wheelbarrow pulls and then the other kid steps in. Um, or you could do two kids with two wheelbarrows, but make sure you have enough wheelbarrows and shovels for each other. Okay? The, the, the compost that you're getting, um, you know, I compost, I know what that looks like. You know, it can be, you, you stick, you, you take a, you know, a shovel full of it, and you can kind of stick to the shovel full of it. Are you spreading that around? What you yeah, it, yeah, stop, right. Like, That's a good question. Like Spread it around. Like, and, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, some people are like really meticulous. They want to rake it so it's exactly a quarter of an inch. And, you know, you just just get it out there on the lawn. It's the most important thing. And the worms will take care of it, you know. And the other thing is that you're going to do it again anyway, right? So the next time you say, okay, well, let's put a little more in these areas that are not so good. So. Don't don't spend a lot of time trying to spread it like you know you're not decorating a birthday cake. You know, just just get it out there and the worms will the worms will do their thing. Can you get sifted though? Uh, sifted compost or Yeah, but if you fling it, you know it breaks apart. And if there's big clumps you might want to go over it, touch it up with a rake, but otherwise you're okay. Okay. So Maybe see. after you get the athletes to throw it around, <coughs> you get a bunch of dancers to go dance and break up. Excellent, excellent, <laughs> right? And they all the side the right? <laughs> okay, so here's we, we talked about this little chart, and I can use it. This is a sample of how you can do it, and then you just count up your blocks and say, okay, gosh, I have, I have five thousand square feet. Um, I need, you know, approximately. 1,300, 1, 000, one cubic yard will cover about 1,300 square feet. I might need four or five cubic yards, which is like a truckload. And if we go to the next thing, we go to Oh, good. Yeah. Does everybody follow that there? There's a sheet over there. Okay, let's go to the next one. I'm going to try and go ahead. Okay. 
Okay, so if you put it on this season, if you put it on now, you won't see the results till next spring. Okay, so it's time. It takes time, but you know it has to get down in the soil and do its thing. You're not you're not putting something on the lawn that's going to wash out in six weeks. Uh, this is a quick note on grubs and nematodes. Basically, you can, if you have a problem with nematodes and grubs, you can use either milky spore or or nematodes on the grubs, and and they both work really well. The healthier your soil is, the less problem you have with grubs. Okay, go back that green slide. Mm -hmm. <coughs> what does it say? Milky spore. Have grubs, frequency, uh, no spore, <clears throat> I think milky spore you put it on in the spring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it'll tell you on the box. Or get it, get it online and order it, and then you know you have it. Well, no, milky spore goes in the fall, sorry. At least that's when I did it. Nematodes, when it's raining, because they're li it's actually a live worm in there. So you Maybe I missed something. You're, you're buying worms to spread throughout your lawn? Is that what No, you're, you're buying nematodes to kill the grubs. Uh, Sorry okay. about this. Okay, so we're just talking about grubs when you have problems with grubs in your lawn. Mm -hmm. um, people complain about that fairly often. And if you get nematodes and spread them around, nematodes go out and they find a grub, right? They burrow into the grub, they lay eggs, and the, and the grub basically explodes with thousands of little nematodes, which you won't even notice because they're so small, right? And then they go looking for another grub, and they'll just wipe out the grub population. You buy those at the hardware store? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Or online. Online is a good place to do it because then you know you get them and they're fresh. They're not, they've been sitting on a shelf for months. Okay, but the healthier your lawn is, the less problem you have with the grubs. You know what grubs are. Grubs are the little white worms. They're kind of, they're about that diameter maybe, and they're white. You would curl up in a ball. Yeah, they're in a circle, yeah. But you know, because you don't have grass, you have like patches of dirt where grass isn't growing because yeah. they eat the roots. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do you see them in your soil sample, I'm assuming? Okay. Well, you see you could. This yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. You could find them when you take your soil sample. Yeah. They're not, they're not bad at frying a little bit of brown sugar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> low maintenance. Once you've done that, okay, so this seems like maybe a big deal, but once you've done it, you're done. You know, you can say, okay, I'll put compost on once. And you say, yeah, I'd like it a little bit nicer. You can do it a second time, right? Or you can, or you can say, really, I really want to have a nice lawn. The in-laws are coming. I really got to have this looking great, you know, for in the next couple years. You're going to have to plan on a couple of years. But I really want a nice lawn. My kids are growing up. I want them to be able to play soccer out here and not have, not have dandelions or whatever. So. It's going to take a couple of years to get there, but you can do that. It depends on how, how you can just do what you want. You can do it a lot if you want a really nice lawn, or you can do it a little bit and your lawn is maybe it's acceptable for you. Um, the best thing is that, that once you get that organic material in there, you don't need to water. It might, we might have a drought like we had last summer, and it'll completely dry up. But once we get rain again, it'll just pop right back up again. The grass won't dry. Up. So, um, and here's a comparison of cost. Okay, so this is 5,000 square feet, which is pretty typical lawn, right? You need about four yards of compost, four or five yards. That's like one a truckload will take up. To, well, usually they'll say seven yards. They'll take it a truckload. This is Agway prices, $43 a yard plus $25 delivery. I figured um, four hours at $17 an hour for, to have um, come, somebody come spread it for you. Um, 
So that's $270 that would cost you this spring for that. Okay. The alternate is lawn service. They do six treatments for $402. That was the code I got last night. Uh, which is great, and if in a couple of years they say, gee, you know, your lawn really, you really need to irrigate, this is what it's going to cost you. That's where it, it really is expensive. And the advantage of doing it naturally is that, let's say you do it three times over three years, um, you get your lawn fixed, but then you're, you're done. You know, the, the guy next door who sees the lawn service is still paying $402 for the rest of his life. So, and then the next, and as a comparison, I have an acre of lawn. Okay, I have to do compost. It's a lot of compost. It's like, you know, how many is Five truck loads or something. You're going to have to really make this into a project, but an acre of lawn is a lot of lawn. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's make a point of spreading leaves. In the fall, you know, when the leaves have fallen, if you have, if the leaves are so thick that you can't see the grass anymore, you know, like this, it's probably too many leaves to mow in, but if your leaves are, if you can see the grass come popping through a little bit here and there, just mow those leaves and, and it'll chop them up and, and uh, they'll provide fertilizer, let your glass, grass clippings drop, don't pick those up, you know, and those will provide more, and that will add organic material. And, and, and after a number of years, you may want to add more compost, but basically you can keep your lawn self-sustained that way. So, so once you're fully on board with this method, the only thing you're spreading in your lawn that looks chemically might be like lime pellets or something like that, but like you're not going after like the weed and feed or chip builder or that stuff. Right. No. Once you've put even mm -hmm. lime down, once you've corrected your lime, you should be good for a number of years, and and then just put keep putting on compost until it's up to the standard you want, and then you're done. You know, maybe ten years from now you might say, ah, it needs a little rejuvenation. I'll, I'll put more compost on it, but but you're not into every year. What about weeds? You know, during this kind of build-up phase, you sort of takes about a year for the compost to mm -hmm. really start to take effect. Uh, you're going to be subject to weed growth if you have spotty patches. One thing you can do uh, is you can put in a, a pre-emergent, which is uh, corn gluten, mm -hmm. which is I think that may be even um, NOP or OMRI approved. Look for that in the spring. You have to do it in the spring because it's a pre-emergent, but. Um, Apparently, corn has the ability when it comes up to to tell weeds not to grow nearby, and they use corn gluten, and it sends out a message mm -hmm. not to grow there. But then the grass will come in later. So it's like corn uh, corn gluten pre-emergent. Yeah. Is it worth buying worms and importing them if you think your lawn needs it, or is it safe to do that? Is it worth importing earthworms? Yeah. Like no, because they'll just grow. They'll just come when 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 the soil is. They'll just show up. The way right. They'll they just show up. Yeah. Have a couple. Yeah. This it's like oh compost. We're having a party. 